Hello, everyone, and welcome to DevNet Create. In this segment, we would like to bring forward to you stories of people from all around the globe who have used tech for good. I'm Shweta Palande, developer advocate at Cisco DevNet, and today, joining me from UK, we have Sri. Sri was an apprentice with Cisco, and she's going to share a bit about her project, which she was working upon, called Trussell Trust. Sri, why don't you walk us through what this project is about and how do you get involved with this project? Uh, so the Trussell Trust project was essentially um, a project where we built a web-based application for the Trussell Trust. Um, the Trussell Trust are a food bank network in the UK, so they run every single food bank um, that's available for people to use within the UK. Um, so people who are going through things like food poverty, rise of living costs, employment issues, this is sort of a temporary support for them when they're going through those tough times. So essentially I worked with a principal developer called Pete, um, Pete Wright, and he sort of guided me through the process of how to build an app from scratch. Um, for me, this was my first sort of development project, so it was quite daunting, but rewarding. Wow. I mean, building an app from scratch certainly comes with its own challenges. So what were some of the challenges which you faced while building such type of application? The key challenge was understanding operations of the different food banks. Um, it was a pilot project, so we only had 10 food banks to begin with. But that in itself was a big challenge because there's no centralized management for food stock um, for each different food bank. They just work in their own way. And a lot of their workers are volunteers, so um, they, had to, they have to come up with quick fixes on the spot. Um, so each different food bank works in a different ways. So that was a key challenge that we faced. Um, for me personally, though, because it was my first sort of software development project, um, I thought it was quite um, daunting. I thought I lacked the skills, but just working on something live made me, it pushed me to work harder, I think. That's amazing. And Sri, so, uh, you know, people from such similar technological backgrounds who want to volunteer for such programs, how can they get started with? So I think being proactive is the key um, key thing to do. Um, a lot of com companies, people who are running things on their own lack the technical skills um, to build something like this. And so if you have any sort of like web development experience or even just knowledge, I think putting that to use is really useful. Um, I think even if you lack the confidence, I think if you're able and willing to help somebody, then you should put yourself out there. Yeah, no, that's a great suggestion. You should put your out there. It's, you know, most of the times people won't come and ask you actively for their help. You have to take a look around that which are the NGOs which are doing something and might need some a bit of your technical skill sets you're in there. So, yeah, thank you so much for sharing that with your story with us today. Thank you. Welcome to DevNet Create. We have today with us Oli, who is joining from UK. Oli is part of a project named All of Us Together. It's a project which helps map out places that offer free meals to children who do not have access to it. So Oli, can you share us with us more details about what this project is about? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so in the UK, there's a criteria of eligibility that people from struggling households um, may be eligible for which is free school meals within education so the child who goes to school will be able to have um, lunch provided for them and breakfast provided to them potentially um, if the family is a, in a less fortunate position um, however it came to the front of the news cycle and specifically a famous footballer called Marcus Rashford was championing a campaign um, because it was decided by the UK government that it couldn't be funded for these children outside of the school holidays who were in these less fortunate positions, the families may not be able to afford to pay for the lunches that was normally provided by schools during term time. Um, and after this decision, a full campaign was started where local businesses, um, cafes, restaurants, um, churches, any business who could possibly help were offering um, this capability. They were saying that children who needed this support could come to them on a school on a non-school day and ask um, for the assistance or ask for any meals. And these places were offering that out. 
and this started and it just amalgamated on Twitter to a big um, push from all these businesses posting about it and famous people and loads of groups were all just sending locations all over the place. Um, so I took the initiative to start with of taking these places, starting off initially manually, um, taking them and trying to map them using the Google Maps um, front end. And then we tried to automate a bit further by attaching hashtags to these things. And then we took all these different people, some who had similar ideas to me, and we started to build out a map. So it was more accessible for everybody who needed this support to see it all in one place, to check their area and things like that. Wow, that's an amazing initiative, Oli. And you are an apprentice with Cisco. So in this within short time span which where you are being associated with Cisco, you started this initiative. It's really inspiring. So I'm sure there must have been uh, some kind of technical roadblocks or a learning curve with this project. Can you share, talk more about that? Yeah, so we were a split team um, working individually and things like that and doing so much work manually. Like we were getting thousands of requests for places that were offering this help. Um, so we started to communicate a bit more and try and try to build something that's a bit more automated. So using Python and like the Twitter API to identify the tweets that were coming in. And then we could record them in Google Sheets or Excel or something like that. So it'd pull them in automatically and then we'd have a pipeline to build. And then we'd try to do some data sanitation um, using Python to ensure the tweets that were coming in had the useful information and could highlight to us um, anything that was missing because we were getting lots of tweets in that were just locations, like just a name of a place. And we didn't know what they were offering or what the town necessarily was or the postcard or anything like that. So we had that was one of the big challenges that we had was correctly identifying these places so that when we mapped them, we knew we were doing it with accuracy because we didn't want to send anybody to a location without any without the proper information. Um, and then once we'd got the back end built, we wanted to make sure that these people could have good access to the front end so they could put in their postcode ideally and it would tell them their lo local spots and things like that. So it started out as just a big map on Google Maps. And then we built more of a React um, front end so that you could see, so you could input some information and get a list back, which would pull from the back end of the Google Sheet and things like that. Wow, that's amazing. How was your total experience of working with such type of project, which has a certain amount extent of social impact to it? Um, it was very interesting. It was it felt very positive to do something for good. Um, having the ability to use my skills. Um, of understanding the technology and trying to make that better for people to try and improve people's lives using the technology is something that I'm personally very passionate about um, and have been for a long time and being able to do that along with many like-minded people who were who weren't doing tasks for themselves they were doing it to help these people who were in a struggling position and we were all just putting in as much effort as we could and it was such a positive experience to see all these people working together collaborating across the UK with people of all experiences, ages, races, genders, everything. We're all just working together. It's such a well-formed team and we managed to actually get the map built and put out for people and it was deemed a success. Awesome. And Ollie, if there are more people with such technical background and they want to contribute to such causes, what would you say would be the best way to approach? I think that reaching out on Twitter identifying these places that not necessarily just for this project but identifying areas where you feel passionate about where you feel technology can be in a place to improve the situation and things like that and twitter is always a really good place to start for that in my opinion um, and reaching out to people to find out how you can help awesome thank you so much for sharing your story with us Ali. i'm sure that's definitely inspiring and will encourage others to uh, put their skill sets towards social good as well thank you